morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mara usually says, let's go ahead and start the service off with some prayer, right? Thank you, Lord, for another day. I thank you, God, that we get to come to your house, Lord, freely without any persecution or anything coming against us, and we get to come here and praise your name as long as we want, and we get to just spend some time with you. I ask, God, that you would please bless the service, that you would bless those that are hurting today, bring comfort to their hearts, bring strength for those that are going through battle. Father God, I ask that you would just allow us to be blessed today and that you would receive our worship. We, uh, we pray for all those that are speaking today that you would just speak through them, God, that you would open our hearts to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the verse I want to share with you guys today is John 15, 13, and it says, The greatest love a person can show, can show is to die for his friends. Don't you think it's amazing that before we were even created, God thought of you as a friend. Amen. He thought of you as a friend, and he gave his life on a cross for you. Hallelujah. They're knowing very well that, hey, this person is going to mess up sometime in their life. Hey, this person is probably going to reject me at some moment in their life. But you know what? I'm still going to give my life on the cross for them because they're so worth it. Because I love them with such a love that they are my friend. Isn't that amazing? And the Bible says that that's the greatest love anyone can give. He gave us the greatest. And if you're here today, it's probably because you believe in it, right? You've received that love and you realize how much it changes you, how much how much it lifts you up, amen, and how it gets you through those tough times. So today, let's just glorify him. Let's worship his holy name with all our hearts and let's just show our appreciation for the love that he's given us, amen.
Jesus, we are loved for your grace. We thank you for Hallelujah. We giving us all your love on the cross. We pour out your blood for us, God, so that we can have forgiveness, so that we can have a life filled with faith, Lord, filled with truth. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way. We worship you.
and to know that really it's all about you. The way you meet our needs, the way, Lord, you listen to our needs. Are you walking the leaders, guiding us? And you're always there, Lord, to be able to lead us through the difficult times of life. So today we come to help you worship, believing that something good is going to happen. There's a challenge before our lives, so there's issues that we take care of, but God, with you, we can do all things. We pray this morning that you remove all the issues, Lord, that we Allow us to concentrate on you and receive direction for our lives. We walk out of this place, Lord, that today we spend some time with you. That's important. That we acknowledge, Lord, your presence. We acknowledge the fact that we spend some time with you and that today is the first day of the rest of our life. We go into the work believing, God, that there's a miracle in the house. We believe in God that you're going to meet our every needs, every Father, as we do according to your word. I ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. And let their people yeah. out of life. <laughs> All right, a little hello to everybody. I really hope that last Sunday you walked in the church. You think the rapture had come and you were left behind in the back of the church. I had a little love. Uh, really special moment in my life. We, we get some of those once in a while. Where you work the whole lifetime and you never know how much an impact you have in the lives of people. You never know. You come do what God calls you to do. You share your heart with people and the rest belongs to God. As we look back into as I look back into my life, I look at the labor, the work I've invested, you know, in God's kingdom. And I see the different people that we've touched. And I got a phone call during the week, and it was from the church where I pastored 52 years ago in Spanola, New Mexico. And uh, when they contacted me, they said, are you Pastor Raul Martinez, Pastor of our Pastor Davey May? I said, yeah, it'd be glad to be all this pastor. He said, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, I have a difficult question to ask you. I said, okay. Uh, can you be with us on the 29th? Because that's Pastor Appreciation Day, it's his birthday. I would like to surprise him by you being here for the service. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I said, I have a Street 16 I got to officiate Saturday at 7 o'clock. And right after that, I'll hop in the car and take off. Thank God. You know how, how blessed I am? I have an Uber, man. Brother Sean was there to take me. I mean, I just pulled over. I went over, went and did my ceremony. We went to his house, picked him up, and boop, I just sat in the car all the way. We got to Albuquerque at 11 o'clock that night, 11.30, crashed out, and then, I mean, crashed out in school to city. <laughs> and then next morning, we went up to Espanola. Well, we totally caught him off guard, totally, totally caught him off guard. If you're even interested in watching it, you can watch it on Facebook. It's under Nancy Juan Martinez, Espanola, the whole service is in there. I mean, when he's, when uh, it was set up through a school call, supposedly, I was in the office, in the church. And so I wish I could have been there to show them all when we went to those scenarios. Then I said, Mio, if I get the next time I see you, can I get a hug from you? He said, definitely, yeah. Well, what can that be? He said, what did you say? I said, well, uh, can we do it now? He said, well, that's it. Each and each is talking on the phone. He's facing the altar, and I'm walking in from the back of the church. Will you bring me up to where he's at? And then the co-pastor gets the phone. I, Yes, Mike said, well, you know, you heard him on the phone now. Now, Pastor, you can see him now. Turn around. Give me a hug. Cry and cry with me. And it, was, it was really good. Really good. And Brother Sean experienced it with me. It was a very large church, a lot of people. There's a mixture of a lot of different cultures in there. If you've ever been in Northern Mexico, you know there's still a lot of homeboys, all that kind of stuff. And so at the end of the service, when people come by, congratulate the pastor. I was like in the first chair like that, and then I had my bodyguard right behind me, I was really shocked. <laughs> and then one of these gentlemen, this Cholito, he's still into the Cholito bit. He had an Oakland Raiders cap on, a uh, Raiders hat on. Comes up, he gives my hand, says, Hey, Holmes, te has a I mean, that was good word, man. When are you going to come back and say something? You like me? You like me and I'll come back. Man, I tell you, I was so blessed. I didn't realize the impact I had in his life. When people come and shook my hand, they said, he always talks about you. 
He always references you 52 years later. He always talks about, and Pastor Martin would say this, and he would do this, he would that way. That's, sometimes we need moments like that in our lives. Amen. We need moments to reflect and stop and think, you know, you work so hard at what you do. And a lot of times we need to see the fruit of your labor. Sometimes you're so stuck, you're, you're so determined in the job you have to do, you can't see what's happening. You're bound by a lot of issues that surround you. Decisions have to be made. Raise the money that we need for the church. All that comes into play. And you can't see. Sometimes we can't see the forest because of the trees. And we have moments like this in our lives that are really good. But then Brother Sean is the only live witness to this. They need to pray for the pastor of Brother Sean. They need to pray for the pastor, yes. How many know that if you ever want to cut a good deal, take me with you. I, I make good deals. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. We're on a big long way back from Española, and I told uh, Brother Sean, since he said, don't forget to buy me piñon. If you there's any, stop and buy me some. And we know where it's at. You can see the spot, guys there. I said, I'm going to get you some. Let's go. Let's go. And he's driving all the center. Right before we get on the freeway to get home, he said, oh, Pastor, let the car. He saw the I said, oh, stop. So stopped and backed up. I'd been on the phone. I get down, talk to the guy. The gentleman comes out. He says, oh, yeah, let me get a little back up like this. Okay, a little plastic back like this. 25 bucks. I said, wow. I got to take her something, you know. First of all, she called me and says, what did you bring me? I said, I brought you me. <laughs> I brought you me. Yeah. And I stopped and, and so I've been on the phone. I brought it to me. I put the phone down. And it's time to pay. So I take out. I started to pay. The wind's blowing. She goes on the other side to block the wind, all kind of stuff. I pay him, get my pignon, pick up the phone, get in the car, we take off. I'm going to continue the phone call that I was on before. And I looked at the phone in my hand, and I had stolen the guy's iPhone. <laughs> He had put his phone down on the table, and I picked up his phone and took it with me. <laughs> How else, where else can you go for 25 bucks, like being known, and an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> Give me credit, man. I'm a, I tell Brother Sean, thank you, brother, I'm a sinner, and I I said, what made me feel so bad is that I didn't have guilt. I just walked up. You didn't even run or hide your phone. So this is cool. This is cool. What are we going to do? I said, wait for him to call. And then the phone rings, and it was a customer. Then the phone, yeah, I got your phone call. Where are you? He said, I said, we're about three, three miles down the road. But about three miles down the road. Oh, man. He says, give me your name. Give me your, your address, and I'll mail it to you tomorrow. You know, promises people make up here, brother. I don't think he believed I was going to get him. Sure enough, he should have it back on. I sent it Monday morning. I went straight to the post office, and it went back to me. So I am relieved. I have confessed my sin. I think I should have his iPhone. And the only thing I didn't get, the only thing I didn't send was a return address from where I had sent it. <laughs> Turned out where it was. But I had a really great 24 hours. We left here at 8 o'clock Saturday night and drove into El Paso at 8.30 Sunday night. So blessed, so happy that I was able to make a difference in life. Amen. And he's got so Amen. many people, so many. It was a big, big church, you know. And thank God for that. David took a lot to hear Brother Sean. Yeah. Yeah. They gave, us, they gave him a gift card. The pastor says, All right, that was set up for whoever I took with me to go with. You should have gone with me. <laughs> he took me to this restaurant, like, and when we look at the menu, you're like, oh, my God. Oh. You know how I am? I go, like, let's get the cheapest. They didn't have a list of that. <laughs> So I'm waiting to hear what the pastor's wife is going to order. So I don't know what more than give me a guideline. The pastor says, hey, you know what, Pastor? Order what you get in tag one because whatever, we don't use this card, we lose it. We lose it. So I'm like, okay. And then she says, the wife says, I want a cowboy steak. And I go, hmm. Yeah. Are we buying a steak for the cow? <laughs> $46 for a steak? Oh my God. I will chew it good. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. But in spite of everything that surrounds our ministry, my love is here. God called me to El Paso. God had his perfect plan for my life in your heart. Amen. 
And there's nothing better than to be with the ones that God put into you. Amen. And to understand that that calling comes from God. It's not a choice that you make, it's a choice God makes for you. It means you need to be obedient to the cross. We have many, many people that moved out of our past and be part of the church. We see some years back a call from San Antonio. We have lots of people used to be in their Muslim here in San Antonio now. They said, Pastor, come to San Antonio. You don't have to struggle, you'll be okay financially. And they added up all the people that were there, plus my family, which is in San Antonio. They said, we can have at least 250, 300 per Sunday. Why don't you come over here? Just come over here. I said, no. No, God called me to El Paso. I said, because of the fact that God allows me to preach his word, I will go visit San Antonio and preach. But I've got to be where God wants me. If there's going to be any, if I'm going to fulfill my calling and receive the utmost of my calling, I need to be where God wants me, not where I want to be. I can go from place to place if invited and share my heart with people, but I know where I belong. I know where my house is. I know where my roots are. And a lot of people say, how fascinating, yeah. Jesus is there. My church is there. My kids are here, my grandkids are here, my great-grandkids are here, and what else would I want? I stand here a very blessed man, for God has been in my life. I stand recognizing that without him we're nothing. And to share with you this series of messages called, Then Jesus Came. It's important to understand how in different venues it's the same Jesus meeting diverse kinds of needs. So many times we kind of limit God to what he's going to do by not inviting him into the situation. By thinking, I got this, I can take care of this. And we forget who the Lord really is. We forget the basic fundamental ABCs of our Christian walk with Jesus Christ. Now we all have people, special people in our lives that we like to call home going through time. How many have special people in your life that you got to call up? Yeah. And you feel like if I can talk to him or her, I got this. I got this. I need to hear the voice. I need to feel good because these people have been fighting. I trust them. I believe in them. They give me good counsel. They're good friends. They say, when you make that phone call, what you're looking for, you're looking for advice, companionship, and to change of the venue that's standing before you. You call because there's a need within your life. You call because you feel that this person is so special, has impacted your life in such a way that if you can hear from them and listen to them, then everything's going to be okay. When you see people, it's a lot easier to pick up the phone and talk to a friend. It's a lot easier to get on their knees and talk to God. I say easier because we've got to make the time to talk. Amen. You've got to make the time to do it, to spend time with God. It's easier to pick up a phone. Some already have speed up. Woo! Straight to the person. Well, I want you to know that you and I can also get on our knees. We just call upon the Lord. He's closer than the air that you breathe. Amen. We trust people. We invite people, we cherish their companionship, we respect their opinions, we listen to what they have to say, but the only one that can be with you 24-7, his name is still Jesus Christ. I bet amen. And I don't understand that. Yes, it's easier to pick up a phone. Oh, but it's so awesome to be in the presence of God. To amen. understand you're not speaking to just anybody, you're speaking the great I am. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the one that created the world, the one that can change circumstances, the one that looks upon your life and there's nothing so small he can't take care of or something so big he can't handle. That's what he's all about. And this we need to understand, people, that when Jesus arrives on the scene, he will come when he is invited. When he has to come, he will come to meet your every need. Quit can we alone? So we're going through a difficult time right now. Come on, share it with Jesus Christ. Allow him to be Lord over your life. I know it's easier to talk to someone. You can just sit down and talk this way with them. But let me tell you something. I can give you advice. I can pray with you. But I cannot change your life. The one that changed your life is your faith in our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Your ability to believe that he is in the house. Your ability to understand that a child of the king, you have that right. You have that opportunity to call upon the Lord. Nobody else is closer to God than you and God. And yourself. You determine. You are the one in control of that blessing of God upon your life. You're the one who can look upon your life and say, you know what, God, I need your help. And if you go through trying times of the day, 
And so when they're going through trying times and all that right now, we call upon the Lord and say, God, I can't do this anymore, but I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So when Jesus comes, the first thing we'll learn is that everything is done in God's time. Amen. I've told you countless times how God doesn't have a calendar. He doesn't have a clock, yet he's never late. We have our own concepts and ideas of when, how, and why things should be done. But we cannot enslave God to that situation. He is God. He is the great I am. He's the one that knows what you really need and when you need it. That's the bottom line. So when you call upon the Lord, you have to learn that everything is according to His time. How many know that He hears all your prayers? Amen. How many have gone through a phase of life and you feel like He's not listening? Amen. Been there? Oh, come on, been there. Come on, been there. You're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. And uh, a lot of times, maybe we're not listening. Maybe that's the problem. Then the scriptures say, be still and know that I am God. Isn't that a nice way to say, shut up? <laughs> <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? I'm trying to talk, man. I'm trying to talk. You know, sometimes we get on our family call. We have every night we get together and pray together for a good bit. And what's new, we all share whatever's going on. A couple of nights ago, my sister's going on and they're talking. I'm just sort of listening. And she says, Are you there, Rolito? I can't hear anything. I said, Man, please let me talk. <laughs> and please give me a chance. You know, to talk. Because a lot of times we're so invested in our vein, in our passion to ask God for certain things, that we're not listening. We know how to ask, but we don't know how to listen. We know how to plead, but we don't know how to be patient. And I tell you something, I'll guarantee you something. How many have called upon the Lord and God answered? Amen. Amen. When? In His time. In His time. And that's what we need to understand. And you would say, why in His time, Pastor? I mean, why can't it be because we're trying to call upon Him? Let me tell you why. How many have seen the been to the store and seen a spoiled brat have a fit at the store. Mm -hmm. I don't want this, I don't want this. Oh, my God, there we go. Yeah, I want this. And he said, oh, my God, this is terrible. This kid, he doesn't, because he's been given everything he wants, when he wants, because he wants, and he cries until he gets it. Let me tell you something. You can cry all you want to, for God is not going to happen until he says it's going to happen. You can throw your fits all you want. It's not going to happen until he says it's going to happen. Why? Why? Because you need to understand he's in control, not you and I. Amen. We're there to receive what God has for us in his time. His timing is perfect. Now, how many of you go through life and ask something of God, and it seems like he's not answering, and then when they come back, oh, I finally got here. He got no time. Right? I may have financially, oh God, means the need, God, means the need, oh God, you know. Not for the fact of a story that's being told about a young man that ran into financial problems and they gave him some time to come up with $3,000. Because the guy and uncle got money, got to call my deal. Deal, yes, I got a problem. What's that? I got a couple of 3000 bucks, and you know, I want to know if you can help me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And then a week passes, and Theo, I haven't heard from you. You're going to be okay. Two months later, uh, Theo, uh, you haven't heard from me. You're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Then he calls on Theo. I've got to have some money tomorrow, Theo. The Theo said, now you need to worry. <laughs> <laughs> See, so many times we have our vein. We have determined the way God's going to do things, and God has his way of doing. Again, why, Pastor? He says, you know why? That his name might be glorified. Amen. That you understand that when it comes, it had to be Jesus. It had to be him. The source is going to use you. have no idea. You go for God and God, look at it. Take God, I don't know where from, I don't know how it's going to happen, but God is going to happen. And when it happens, you look back and say, really? And I didn't get before I needed it. Why did that happen? Well, I believe this is me, okay? They buy financial aid and God gives it before I need it, then I'll spend it on something else. So I won't give it to you until you really need it. 
And when the time comes, it will be there. It will be there. I knew a very famous man for a great part of my life that taught me a lot of valuable lessons. He's not in the Bible, but very close. And that was my dad. He says, always oh, need to remember one thing. My God should supply all my needs Amen. according to his riches and glory. You've got to believe God. Yes. You've got to trust God. You've got to embrace God. That's what we need to learn. Learn not to be deflated, not to be discouraged, not to say, oh my God, you don't care. We need to understand that once you go before God, he's heard your prayer and it's coming when you need it, not when you want it. Amen. Understand right. that? There's a lot of people going through their scurrying time right now. Because your wants have superseded your need. It's more important to cry about what you don't have than to believe to what God's going to send you. So I need you. And because we're human, how many are still human? How many still get discouraged? How many still eat? Okay, I can see that. So we need to understand because when this part of us takes over our life, we really go down the trail. All our faith kind of goes by the wayside because we forget. We forget that it's all going to be in his time. So brother and sister, when you're sitting here today, you're watching over Facebook, go see it later on YouTube, understand one thing. As you walk in the valley of shadow and death, have no fear because the Lord is going to be with you. Amen. And if the Lord be with you, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Do the teacher trust God. You're going to believe in God. And it's all said and done to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Never take God's blessings for granted. Never feel like you deserve something. It's through his grace and mercy that he gives to you. And I believe that it's our job that once our need has been met, that we witness it to other people about the greatness of Jesus Christ. People need to listen to something positive and something instead of so many negative things. Well, I I'm so happy when 12 o'clock Tuesday night comes that then we'll have to listen to all this junk going on the politics. We're living in a horrible world, people. We're living in a city in a terrible condition. Mm -hmm. In a state in a ter terrible condition. In a country that has walked away from God. And only God can restore it. Amen. And that's the reason why we need to leave everything in God's hands. How many understand that everything has to do with life and says around us is according to the will of God? And it will happen preordained by God. Yep. I don't like to stand here and make predictions about anything, but that's not my job. I've been called to preach the word of God, to meet the voice within your life, to build the faith in your heart, and understand and be God's in control of all things. When Jesus comes, the second thing we're going to understand is follow. That just because we belong to the family of God, it does not give us a right to set forth the conditions of how things are going to happen. Pastor Jeremiah 33, 3. Okay, let's go there. An open invitation from God. What does he say? He says, call upon me and I'm going to answer. And I'll show you great and mighty things you know not of. How many love that scripture? Okay. Where in that scripture does it say when he's going to answer? Where? He didn't tell you when. No, he didn't tell you when it's going to happen. He said, call upon me and I am going to answer. When? Did you see it there? Is it written in there? It's pre-understood. It will come when he says it's going to come. He says, your job is to call upon me. You call upon me, he says, quit asking people what they think. You want an answer? Ask me. See, because the bottom line, the one who knows everything that surrounds your life is God. He knows where you've been, where you're at, and where you're headed. Amen. So you better trust him rather than what people have to say. There's some people that you will ask an opinion that will build you up. <laughs> some people slap you upside the head and really tear you down instead of helping you out in life. That's why God says, quit depending on people. See, the moment you came to me and I became your Lord and Savior, the scripture says clearly, 
No longer do I live, but Christ lives within me. So if Christ lives within me, it is not my job to wait to what God has to say. Didn't I give up my right to put the conditions the moment I asked him to be Lord of my life? Didn't I say, God, you're in control of all things? And then when he gets really hectic, all of a sudden, you want to take control again. You want to run the whole thing again. You know, I'm very bad about being... How many have backseat drivers in your car? <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Sometimes I wish they were in the backseat. <laughs> I mean, they're like stepping on the brakes or the bottom. Oh, no, no, no. <clears throat> if you ever need a good co-pilot... <laughs> And I'll just do stuff on purpose. <laughs> and she's stuck like that. Did you see that car coming? Oh, that's how it was a bus. <laughs> oh, they got, oh, is it living that mosquito going across? <laughs> There's a lot of people that for your, they want to do good for you, understand that. They want to protect you. But the only one that can bless your life and protect you is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he said, call upon me. Call upon me. And I will answer. Listen to me. Too many people are on their knees asking, not listening. I was here a while ago. You're not listening. What I have to say, saying, wait, 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 wait. It's coming. It's coming. I believe thoroughly in our lives. Every good thing, every blessing of God has a price. If we stop and look about where we come from, man, our salvation, if paid, was a horrendous price. Amen. Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, and not just a quick, quick kill. He suffered. He agonized. He went through a lot of pain. Every good thing in life has its price. He went through that. To then from the cross say, Father, forgive them, but you know what they do. That was the sort of first word out of his mouth. Then he raised us from the dead to be able to culminate the perfect sacrifice for life. That's the reason why we need to go to the one that gave us life, that's going to give you life again, said, I have come if you might have life, and have an abundance. God wants to bless your life, but call upon the Lord, and he's going to answer. Amen. Wow, Pastor, he could use this message to speak. This could be your call from God, to kind of put things in perspective, to say, be still, listen. Listen to what Pastor's saying. Listen to what he's teaching you today about how this thing works. To be able, to says, to wait upon the Lord. He says, call upon him and answer. And then he says this, I, who's I? God. I will show you great and mighty things. I like this part. This is the part I like the most. You know not of. You know what that means? When things happen in your life that don't make sense. Some of you have things happen in your life that don't make sense. Yes. Because when they don't make sense, that's what I'm going to show you. You need to know it there. That's what it's all about. You need to understand it there. When, when there's in your life you don't know not of, don't ask somebody else. Some people in desperation, they go so they can read their palm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I heard somebody say one time, you want, you want your palm read? Come here, sir. Let me read your palm. Show them how it works. <laughs> ah, sir, yes. He said, you want your palm red? They said yes, and go red. They're red. red. <laughs> no, 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 no. The only one that knows the future is God. The only one that knows the reason why you're going through what you're going through is God. And He did not bring you this far to let you down. He did bring you this far to walk away from you. He is not discouraged in you. He's waiting for you to call upon him and understand, yes, it's all in your time, Heavenly Father. And I take my hand off of this situation. The most difficult thing for you and I to do, ask God to do something, and then we stick our hand right back in there. God, I place it in your hands. People that use an altar come up, God, I leave it in your hands. And then you go before it and you take it and walk out with it. Well, you believe in God's hands? What happened? It's so difficult, Pastor. I know it's difficult, but that's why you have faith. 
Well, faith will move the hand of God. Amen. Let the reason why how this God is still to you. The power and the authority to believe in Him. Either say, either you believe and receive, or don't believe and receive nothing. That's what you to God doesn't, oh, He cares a lot. He needs you and I to care. He needs you and I to respect who He is. Acknowledge who He is. And instead of conditioning Him on how to do things, let Him do whatever has to be done. And how it has to be done. Because God is a perfect God. I mean, can you get an amen to that? Amen. He is a perfect God. He knows what to do. He's going to use whatever means are possible, whatever needs to be done, when you turn him loose and say, God, do your thing. When God begins to work, get your hand out of the way. Let him continue. Because part of the solution is sometimes going to bring a little bit of pain. Yeah. How many have had bad experiences with a dentist before? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, good, I'm not alone. <laughs> and while they're tugging it over, oh, you, don't you love the drill? <laughs> <laughs> and while they're still working, oh, it's very, oh, 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 oh. And the drill says, it has to come out. And they work and work on it, and oh, and oh. <sighs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of times, in order to get the solution, you got to go through some pain. Amen. It's, got, it's part of the price. Why, Pastor? Because that teaches you how to appreciate what God is doing for you. Amen. When God meets your need, you understand you're not just anybody. You're a child of Almighty God. Amen. When you learn how to listen to Papa, listen to God, what he has to say, and do things his way. We have this tendency to be control freaks. And we try to run it on God. God, if you can do it like this and like this and like this, we got this. And what do you need God for you know what to do? Don't tell him how to do it. Just be a willing vessel to receive what is coming. <clears throat> to wait upon the Lord for that moment that's going to come. Because he's going to show you things you don't understand. Things that have you wondering, like, why? Why? How many understand that, to many believers, the moment you decide to take a good step from the Lord and start to be a very, very Christian, then, pardon me, Trinity, all hell breaks loose. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, it does. The moment you say, I got this, God, I'm going to serve you, then it begins to pour. Let me tell you something. The one that can control that pour is the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to believe. You need to wait upon the Lord. For those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. I mean that you're being battered by life. You're being battered by situations around you. My God will take care of those situations. My friend, the Pope, well, once you receive the Lord and Savior, He is your healer. He is your provider. He is your protector. He is your best friend you ever had. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why He said, just wait upon the Lord. And those who wait upon will renew their strength. How many people need to renew their strength today? You've gone through the battlefield. You've gone through difficult times. You're going to say that, I, what else could go wrong? And God says, just believe. And to those who believe, all things are possible. Amen. Learn Amen. this morning to believe. Yeah. Learn to embrace the combination that works. Don't tell God how to do it. How many are, how many are just marvel at God's creation? Amen. Have you ever left El Paso? Here we have, yeah, we don't appreciate what we have. You know that? Yeah, because we're here like, really? It's like when you go to San Antonio and tell somebody in San Antonio, I want to go to the Alma. says, yeah, I don't know. And then we're like, really? No big deal. And then they come to El Paso, I want to go to Chico's. Chico? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually had a family. I had a sort of funeral service this last couple of days. The family was coming in from Fort Worth. I said, we need to meet so we can put the service together. When are you arriving? We're arriving Thursday. Thursday. Can we meet? Well, yeah, but we have something already planned. What? First thing we're going to do, we're going to Chico's Taco Center. <laughs> <laughs> my sister comes to Del Paso, we're driving her around, and take her to Transmont. Oh my God, she's got her phone on, telling her, this is awesome. Transmont is awesome. I think when I need a shortcut, only I'm 
and we really don't appreciate what we have. And we share God's creation. How many have been to the Grand Canyon before? That's a hole in the ground. Very <laughs> hole in the ground. And the model of God's creation. Wow. God did this. God did, oh my God, that is awesome. Did he ask you your opinion where to put the rivers? Did he ask you where to put the mountains? Were you consulted with where to put uh, the, uh, the Grand Canyon? No. He didn't need you then. He doesn't need you now. He knows what is going to make your life correct. When you go to the way I am. The same God that created everything you see is the God you call him for. Yeah. That's the reason why you were to say, because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, Father. I hope all the Bible says that I'm going to call upon him and he's going to answer. Yes, he's going to answer in his time. Why? So his name might be glorified. Amen. What's my job? To hang in there. That's it. To come to understand that indeed God is in control of all things. I want to, this is a really, really, like I tell you, like a, like a series like, um, this is the rest of it. I'm going to take a break. I want you to understand this very good, how this works. It's all in God's time. We'll pick it up next week. We're going to start talking about when people are close to Christ, they believe they have the right to ask. Amen. And they believe because they are walking in Jesus Christ, they have the right to ask. We're going to deal out of the book of John chapter number 10, chapter 11, I'm sorry, with the resurrection of Ash. I'll begin this first part of it, first of this teaching. He says that, the Bible says that Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were personal friends of Jesus Christ. And how many would like, how, how many think that's really neat to have? They had him as a friend. I have him, my Lord and Savior. I got one of them. Right? But they're good friends. Every time Christ would go to Bethany, he would stop there at their house. He would crash there, kind of feel like, so, because they had that rapport, because there was that communication with them, because they were on a one-to-one -one basis with them, they felt they had the right to ask for anything they wanted. After all, they took care of him when he came by. So, when Lazarus gets sick, the first thing the sister do on the right side, they set out to find Jesus and tell him that Lazarus is dead. When they send out the messengers, to tell Jesus that Lazarus is, is sick. I'm sorry, he's very sick. They send out expecting what? Jesus to come. When? When did they expect Jesus to come? That's why they asked. They sent somebody out. Go tell him. Your friend Lazarus, the one that you love, the one that's really your good buddy. He's sick. He's very sick. You need to come with the expectation that Jesus was going to come because now they had a need. And like had been there for him, they have sent him, him to be there for them. They didn't realize that it was going to be all in his time. They didn't understand. They just understood my thing. He's a friend. We've helped him. We need him to help us now at this time. See, that's the mindset of all believers. You call on God believing he has to do something just because you're saved. Well, I've been in church for all these years. What else can I do? Well, you've been in church. When you're not in heaven, you're in church. You're not there yet. Well, I have the right to, or you can ask. When was the last time <laughs> you heard the phrase, I well, hope you never hear this. I never heard it in my, in my family. But some family, the kids will say, it's my life. How many heard that one? Heard that phrase before? How many of you used it growing up? Come on, confess. It's my life, I'll match with it. Really? That's what, basically what you're saying. When God said, my time, said, well, it's my life. You're acting up like, really? So when the messengers come back to the house, they're expected to see Jesus. And Jesus did not come. So, okay, thank you. I I'm coming. I'm coming. That sounds like a teenage answer to clean your room. I'll do it. I'm coming. And all of a sudden, that report they had, 
that assurance that they had goes, I thought he was my friend. I thought I could count on him. And there's people today, maybe even sitting here today, you're right there. You're going through a situation in your life and you're calling upon the Lord. You're asking prayer from pastor and people that surround you. And there seems to be no answer. And you waited and waited. And you say, why? Why doesn't he call? Why doesn't he come? Why does he arrive? It's all going to be in his time. Amen. Go into his presence, knowing who he is. <coughs> Acknowledge that everything, he's in control of it. And then only ask and believe. Because to all that believe, all things are possible. Amen. How many believe this morning? I want you to embrace that promise for a moment. So we've been diligently looking after God. You send the word out by saying, people help me pray. I look at Facebook and see all these people asking, help us pray for this. Help, how many have seen that before? Yeah. Help us for this and this and that and the other. Help me help me pray. You put the call out there to people. And God is listening that he will come in his time. Just because you're part of the family doesn't give you the right to tell him how, where, and why, and when to do things. You're subject to his will. And his will is perfect. Amen. It's not almost, it's perfect. He knows your limitations. He knows your hurt. He knows your heart. But it was Isaiah said, the Spirit of the Lord has come upon me and has anointed me. To preach the good word, and he says, the first thing we're going to take care of is to mend the broken heart. God's greatest desire. When Jesus comes, he mends broken hearts. Amen. And he will do it in his time under his conditions. Why? You gave it up. No longer do I live, but Christ lives within me. Now you need to understand it's time to release it into God's hands. Don't hold on to it. The battle belongs to the Lord. Yes. God knows when, how, He's going to do it. You're not forgotten. You're not an afterthought. That's why He died on the cross. He loved you so much. So today I want you to embrace this. Now, whatever you're going through today, don't hold on to the fact I'm in church. Well, I've been in church for a number of years. Let that go. It's about where I'm at today. As I walk to this moment, difficult moment, where am I in my faith? Where am I in my patience? Where am I in my belief that God can do this? The more you doubt, the least it's going to happen. Amen. Because doubt will eliminate, eliminate faith. And faith is what moves the hand of God. So today, have faith. Be strong. Be committed. It's not time to give up. It's time to get with it. It's time to understand it's God in control of all things. It's God. Yes, I do serve Him. Yes, I come to church. I'm part of the family of God. But I don't own Him. He owns me. And I got to do things according to his will. Oh, that God would just break down the barriers. Remove all doubt, all fear, and let him take over. And when you place things into his hands, it's going to happen how he wants, when he wants, and why he wants. And that's what we're saying. He will never send more than what you can take. Got that? You feel I can't take it anymore because you're in the flesh, you're not in the spirit. You're fighting this thing with what this says instead of what this says. You believe in what you can do and can't do. You gotta believe that can't do's can be done by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And today to embrace it. And to say, today's my day. Today's my moment. I come to you, God. If ever I needed you, I need you today. And now I understand. Just because I'm part of the family doesn't give me the right to call the shots. 
It opens the door for me to ask. And you're about to answer according to your will and glory. God, listen to my prayer. I'm going to change my mindset, my attitude. I'm going to ask believing that it's going to come in his time. And my life is going to be blessed because of who he is. So this morning, if this is yours, what I shared with you this morning was yours. And you're going to now turn the page and take a different approach to this. And instead of saying, God, what happened? God, where are you? Saying, God, Jesus, I'm glad that you're here. Because I know that when Jesus comes, good things are going to happen. But I got to have that faith. So as you're going through your struggle today, when they have needs that need to be met, and you want to invite him and say, okay, God, we're going to do it your way. I've tried it my way, look where I'm at. It's through your way. Make me strong. Make me a believer, and I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. If this is you this morning, that has a need, and you want to believe God, and release it to God, and let him do it his way, I want you to stand. I want to pray with you. That today you express your faith by standing and saying, God, it's me. Hallelujah. It's me. Hallelujah. It's me. Go into this trying time, go to this moment of life, go into issues I don't understand. Go into things I don't even agree. I don't even agree with what's going on. But today, your grace is sufficient. Your love is sufficient. If ever I needed you, I need you. And after hearing this message, now I understand. I need to let you take care of it. And you're never late. Just give me comfort. Give me wisdom as I wait upon you. Because the scripture says, those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Be revived. Receive from God. Be strengthened from God. Walk out of here a different person, knowing that indeed today you put everything into his hands. Believe who Christ is. Heavenly Father, I stand in your presence and I thank you, Lord, for your blessings. For the opportunity you give me, Lord, to share my heart with the people that I love. People you put into my care. It is my responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to teach him, Lord, how merciful and loving and understanding you can be. How patient you've waited upon us. And today we take a step of faith. We're fighting this battle. And maybe because we're fighting it our way. We want you to do what we want you to do. Instead of you doing what you need to do. Today we understand. When it's done your way. Your name is going to be glorified. When it's done your way, the answer is going to come. So God, give me the courage to put it into your hands. And just patiently wait upon it. Give me the courage. Bring peace. Bring peace over my life. Holy Spirit, I know you're here. I know you're here. I can sense your presence in the house. There lies, Lord, that needs so much a touch from you. A confirmation from you. Wipe away, away those tears. Make us strong from within. Allow us to stand on the principles of Christianity and faith and believing that you're in control and you're going to do what's right. Help us, Lord, to live. Help us to embrace the moment, to go forward, Heavenly Father, knowing that we're not alone in walking with us. And if you go with us, I can do all things. I lift up my head. Believing and releasing my faith. I call it 
done in the name of Jesus. I call it done in your name, Jesus. Take the load off my shoulders. Remove it from my mind and heart. And let there be peace. And let it begin with me. Peace in the midst of the storm. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. All God is asking is to surrender. Just get up. Just get up. You've done it your way, and look how you're hurting. Hallelujah. Oh, there seems to be no answer. His way. Believe. Believe with all your heart. Release Him to work in your life. And whatever comes down, that was His will. Enter into His presence knowing that He loves you. He didn't come to condemn you, He came to help you. So remove that obstacle. Remove that obstacle. Enter into his presence. And believe. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him exactly what you want. Go. I'm not in a hurry. Just tell me, Jesus. It's this. It's this. After he knows, yeah, but he wants you to confess it. He wants you to say, I need help here. Tell him what it is. Tell him what it is. And then release him. For those to believe, all things are possible. And today is your day. You that are watching over Facebook, we're many miles apart. But God is in the house, in your life. Take time. Take time to spend time with God. And let Him lead your day. Let God minister to your life now. Have a blessed week. Enjoy the presence of God. Embrace the promise of who He is. We have a great testimony about what God has done for your life. Amen. It's time for victory. It's time to win. It's time to put adversity behind us and know that we're not anybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>